say go use drugs, but the 51% is saying don't. And I'm going with the 51%. I will always be in recovery every day of my life, but that's keeping myself in check. That is Ryan Terrio of West Newfield, Maine. He's certainly kept himself in check now more than six months sober since the last time we talked with him. We shared Ryan's story with you in November, a story that's an example that if you put your mind to recovery, it is possible. As WMTW News 8 Steve Minnick shows us, Andrew Kazoulis, who you met earlier, is also in long-term recovery and breaking the stigma surrounding drug use. Yes, I've recovered from a hopeless state of mind and body. I was very physically addicted to opiates and drugs. Sober now for nearly four years. Andrew Kazoulis could be the poster child for that one person you might never have guessed to become hopelessly addicted. You know, I was, you know, two-time all-star lacrosse player, uh, team captain, uh, all-star football player. Um, I did well in school. On his way to play college ball, one day Andrew happened to injure his back at work. Legally prescribed pain pills, but that's how it all began. When I found opiates and a supply of them, it took over very quickly. But as quickly as they came, those prescription pills disappeared. The doctors cut off his supply. However, by then, he was already hooked. You know, this is certainly not a drug problem. This is a, an addiction problem. An addiction that soon led to heroin, cheaper and easier to find. For more than three years, Andrew would inject himself up to a dozen times a day. I knew the heroin would make me feel better, and so I did it. But luckily for Andrew, his family never left his side, eventually getting him to rehab at a cost of some $6,000, but Andrew believes it probably saved his life. And I see a lot of people who don't have that support, they don't have those resources, and it's a near death sentence. All right, so, so Back on his feet, Andrew finally started college, a chemistry student at the University of Southern Maine. However, within months of finishing rehabilitation, he discovered his roommate dead of an apparent heroin overdose, a gut-wrenching reminder of why it's important to stay clean. So not only have I um, seen, uh, but also felt. Um, and that's something that, uh, that I certainly relive daily. Andrew back with us with Gina taking a sip of her water. It's been a long night and Dr. Springle. Andrew, you and I have had a lot of conversations about language mm -hmm. and you want to be referred as in long term recovery. Mm -hmm. We want to use terms like substance use disorder. Can you talk a little bit about why words are so important? Um, a brief existential tangent. Uh, <laughs> words are kin of our thoughts. Our thoughts come from our brains. Our brains are literally creating this reality that we exist in um, and ideas are far, far more deadly than any drug on this planet. Mm -hmm. um, when I internally um, hate myself, which is what a lot of my active substance use disorder looked like, was just me internalizing and punishing myself and saying, why can't I just not feel this way? Why can't I just mm -hmm. get my act together? Uh, why, you know, I can't even do these simple things that people are telling me, it just seems so easy. Why can't I do these things? And just turning that inwards and hating myself. Um, and so now when I talk about where I'm at, uh, it is I'm a person in long-term recovery and it's a commitment um, that, you know, I, I'm going to stay in this. Uh, and it's a reminder that I can ask for help and that it's okay to ask for help. Uh, and that this is a human condition uh, that a lot of people, a lot of people live with. And, and both of you are, are success stories mm -hmm. who are, are living in long-term recovery um, and, sh and show that it is possible. It is possible to recover. It is possible to say, I'm not gonna do this anymore. I mean, we had a conversation I will never forget mm -hmm. when you told me, how am I sane if I'm injecting myself with a needle every day? Right. And that's when it clicked for me as a journalist that this is a sickness. Mm -hmm. is, is that something that you two would, uh, would agree with? That substance use disorder is a sickness? Absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, you know, we look at uh, substance use disorders, addictions as a 
chronic brain disease that's multifactorial, has many different dimensions. Uh, the, the brain circuits are, are faulty. And they don't start that way, but they develop that way over a period of time from exposure to drugs, genetic predisposition, environmental factors, and other things. Uh, and, and so when, when we look at recovery from this chronic brain uh, disease, uh, we have to look at uh, really a multi-dimensional approach. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as stated in an earlier panel, uh, one size does not fit all. Mm -hmm. Recovery does not look the same for every person. Even how we as a society and how our government and medical community measures recovery and the factors that we use, even that has not been standardized until very recently. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a good body of knowledge uh, for our evidence-based uh, treatment to really understand what are the best best methods. Mm -hmm. We do know that uh, that culture plays an important role. We do, we do know that you know, communities, you know, mm -hmm. home, health, uh, having a purpose, mm -hmm. uh, and also the support uh, of a social network are all vital parts of the recovery process. And it's not just heroin or, or opioids. People are addicted to alcohol and food mm -hmm. and, and many other things. We're sticking on that topic. What would you guys say to people watching this who don't feel like there's hope out there? Mm. Well, I probably wouldn't say it. Uh, what I had to say to them. It is absolutely possible. Um, <laughs> and I think every single person that is struggling with substance use disorder um, is worth it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's one of the biggest things that I needed to hear uh -huh. um, when I got into recovery is that I was worth it and I could do it. Mm -hmm. You know, I needed that hope. I needed someone to believe because I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't know how. And you, you did do it. Mm -hmm. Do you find that every day is a struggle? Do you still think about it? Or absolutely no? not. Yeah. The Mm. My life today, I couldn't have dreamt what it looks like today from mm. what it looked like when I uh, was actively Andrew? using. I would totally agree. Um, life can be a four-letter word. I mean, it is actually a four-letter <laughs> word. But, um, a different one. Yeah. Um, you know, I have great days. Um, w I, I have months where I don't think about um, using it all. Um, I have some days where um, I need to really work a program. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, you know, having support, having people who again are, are saying to me, um, Andrew, you can do this. Andrew, you're you're in this. You know, uh, this is possible. And uh, having the community um, together, uh, a network um, to to carry us, carry us all. You know, um, often uh, I'm an educated community that knows yes. what to look for, and I think that's what this whole roller coaster mm -hmm. that we've sort of been through the past year is all about. Well, I appreciate the three of you for being here tonight. We're back in two minutes with some final thoughts.